NASA has slammed a spacecraft into the Dimorphos asteroid. Yes, it was on purpose, and yes, it was to test whether we could successfully redirect potentially hazardous earthbound asteroids if we needed to. All of the great minds in the world thought about the problem of how to redirect an asteroid, and they concluded the best way is to just smash a spacecraft into it. The momentum carried by that spacecraft is then hopefully enough to change the trajectory of the asteroid so that it just about misses the Earth. The big question here then is, did it work? The answer is yes, it was a huge success. The 610 kilogram DART spacecraft hit Dimorphos at about four miles per second. The asteroid, which is about the size of an American football stadium, is actually orbiting a much larger asteroid called Didymus, which is about 0.8 kilometers in diameter. That's why DART is, or was, called DART. It stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, because it hid an asteroid that's in a pair. That's also what made this the perfect place to test such a redirect. It hasn't impacted hard enough to knock it out of the orbit it's currently in and potentially turn it into a problem in the future. We have moved it, but there's no chance of any runaway ripple effect of it hitting other things that could result in something being knocked towards us. Also, to be clear, neither this asteroid nor any known asteroid is actually a threat to Earth right now. This was just a test. This should either make us feel great about our asteroid situation, or it means we just miss some and they'll surprise us one day. It's probably not that one though. We're pretty good at noticing things that are big enough and serious enough to be a planetary threat and dealing with them nice and early, right? This is the moment that DART first saw its target asteroid. Well, it saw the larger Didymus, which you can see circled here, but don't doubt that Dimorphos is there too. Anyway, back to the smashing. NASA is calling this the first planetary defense mission, and we're also calling it a huge success. DART hit Dimorphos from the opposite direction to its orbit around Didymus. This caused it to slow down enough that its orbital distance was reduced. We didn't know beforehand exactly how much it would slow down the asteroid, because this depends on the exact landscape, topology, and composition of the asteroid, which we didn't know. But it turns out that it slowed it down by about 0.4 millimeters per second. That's what happens when you smack 600 kilograms of spacecraft into 4.8 billion kilograms of asteroid. It's a very small change, but it adds up over time. And here we've actually shortened the 11.92 hour orbit of Dimorphos by about 10 minutes. If it was a lone asteroid heading towards us, the drop in speed would mean that the asteroid would then miss its planned rendezvous with Earth. When it does reach the point in our orbit that we would have been, we'll have already moved on around the sun. I guess we just have to make sure we don't slow it down by any exact multiples of one year, because that would be awkward. DART itself doesn't have any scientific instruments on board. It just had some navigation tools that use the sun and stars to navigate, and it also carries the camera used to take the approaching images of the asteroids. Automatically navigating is actually very important for DART, because its target only became visible in the camera an hour before impact, and even then, it was just a single pixel. This onboard camera is called Draco, the Didymus Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for Optical Navigation. And other than that, the spacecraft is just a big weight designed to hit a big rock. Science! While en route, Draco even turned around and snapped this cool picture of Jupiter and some of its moons. Another cool thing is that NASA actually live streamed the impact from the Draco camera. So we can see the impact from DART's point of view. Due to the nature of the mission though, the stream did end somewhat abruptly when the spacecraft successfully completely destroyed itself. DART was, however, carrying a little CubeSat called Lycia Cube, the light Italian CubeSat for the imaging of asteroids. And this little friend has been the one imaging the aftermath of the collision. It jumped off of DART 15 days ahead of the impact, and then imaged the impact and ejector as Lycia drifts past the asteroids just three minutes after the impact. It carried two optical cameras that will send back images, and these cameras have been dubbed Luke and Leia. One is a narrow field of view camera and one a wider camera. It'll take about three days for us to get these images back on Earth, and I'll have a video showing those off which you can find by clicking up here or in the link in the description. I'll also include some more information about the state of the asteroid and how much it was exactly moved by the impact in that video too. 
In addition to Lycia Cube, Earth-based telescopes are also observing the asteroid system to try to understand the exact effect of the impact. And we'll even get infrared images of the asteroids from JWST and visible light images from Hubble in the near future too. In fact, we're actually expecting the ejector to be bright enough in some wavelengths of visible light that even small amateur telescopes might be able to see it. There's also some expectation that some of the 12,000 tons of smashed asteroid debris could reach all the way back to Earth, burn up as it enters our atmosphere and create an artificial meteor shower. The amount of ejector again depends on the exact composition of the asteroid, which we didn't know ahead of time. So we'll have to see if this really does happen. From Earth, it took DART about nine months to reach Dimorphos. It launched on November 24th, 2021 on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and impacted the asteroid on September 26th, 2022. Well, it was actually just after midnight here in the UK. So I guess for me, it was the 27th, but this mission was so cool that we'll let the Americans have this one. In the future, there are plans to send another payload called HERA to the system to study the aftermath in more detail and really try to understand exactly what happened when DART met Dimorphos. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Will you sleep any better knowing that we have some sort of Earth defense system that has been successfully tested to redirect an asteroid? NASA officially calls this the kinetic impact technique, but I think we should all agree to call it the smash and dash defense technique. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.